So Huang Xiao's starting situation is apparently very hard, which I guess one could argue that it could be very hard if you don't know what you're doing. If you do know what you're doing and you have a decent plan, however, you can wipe out two major factions extremely early on and pick up three of the best weapons in the game from Liu Bei's generals. By turn 5, we can pick up Liu Bei's Shang Gu Jians, which have relatively okay stats, but by far the worst weapon out of the three. The next weapon we pick up is Zhang Fei's Serpent Spear, which has really high base damage and a relatively decent amount of armor piercing damage. On top of that, it has some pretty nice stats, but the Green Dragon Crescent Blade definitely dwarfs it. It only has 100 less base damage, but 200 more armor piercing damage, and it gives 3 more expertise and instinct with a massive 50 charge bonus. On this run, I pick up 2 of them, I believe, by turn 4, and then the other by turn 5 and with these three weapons we're gonna have some insane generals as always we're playing on legendary campaign difficulty and legendary battle difficulty which are the hardest difficulties and without further ado let's get right into the run so in the new update if you have too many generals with low satisfaction you get this debuff which reduces all experience gained by 25% military supplies by 4 and adds 15% corruption to get around that I restarted until I picked up this exceptional philosopher which gives 10 satisfaction faction wide as long as whoever's using it is a faction leader. Since we're playing on legendary difficulty, generals have a debuff for negative 10 satisfaction the entire game, and this will serve to counteract that. The cunning is also nice too, because we're going to give this guy a lot of archers, but we'll get into that later. We start off doing the tutorial battle, and there's really not much of a trick to this one. Fighting it on the field is worth it, as you can get much better results than just delegating the battle and letting the AI decide the outcome. The main thing I do here is just make sure that I activate Huang Xiao's buff, which is surprise attack, and essentially this just gives some speed and some melee damage to all units around him. The buff also causes fear which I believe just reduces morale to whatever's around units that are affected by the buff and it allows units to stalk which makes them invisible until they get close to the enemy. Huan Shao also has a passive buff as well which increases range damage by 25% to whatever units are in a radius around him and so mainly in this battle and in most battles I just make sure to keep Huang Shao next to the archers. We don't hit the 50% chance to capture this guy but it's not a big deal as since we are yellow turban everyone hates us and no one will join us anyways unless they are fellow yellow turbans. The last thing this army will do this turn is activate Stance March and march up to Kongrong's border. We'll then choose a reform and these are all personal preference but I like to go for the 10% extra campaign movement range. That will take 4 turns of research and if you guys don't know what enlightenment is, essentially enlightenment helps us rank up and we need to rank up in order to unlock better reforms. We have another army chilling at Dong but we're not going to do anything with it and we're just going to end turn 1. At the start of turn 2 we attack the town of Bihai with Huang Shao's army. We start the battle with our troops split up so the enemy does split up their troops as well. We then activate surprise attack which gives this unit a huge boost of speed and we send it over to the enemy's tower to capture it and burn it down as one thing about yellow turban troops is they all seem to have this ability raider which makes them burn down nearby buildings if they're not moving. The enemy finally does react with their G militia but it's too late and we start pelting them down with our archers which is fairly easy as G militia have no shields. We do the same to their other G militia taking it apart pretty quickly which then leaves only their archers. This part does kind of suck as we're forced to send in our general as well as our units through multiple towers as well as there is a tower towards the center of the city which does get some damage in on our general as he is taking apart the archers by himself. The enemy does start routing fairly quickly however and the city is now ours. Before any turn we set up an ambush with P. Yuan Shao's army as well as putting two generals in his army. I give him all melee units because he has a buff that increases their damage by 10% and I give this girl all melee units because she has a buff that increases their attack rate by 33% or at least that's what I thought originally. It turns out the buff only applies to her as there's no area of effect next to duration. This is kind of a fail as the units I gave her are fairly expensive and up to the point where I'm at which is like turn 14 we've been spending quite a bit of money on these units around 100 per turn and she probably would have been better off just going archers. We end turn and Kongrong is pissed. He attacks our town of Beehai and with our inferior forces our advisors predict a decisive defeat. We set up two barricades which blocks the enemy movement from getting any further into our city and if they do want to take this route they're gonna have to destroy the barricades which does take time. The enemy splits up and sends their general who is already wounded and their saber cavalry unit through a set of towers and our bowmen who are positioned on top of our barricades. Archers that are positioned on top of barricades cannot be attacked in melee until the barricades are destroyed. This saber militia unit also strangely splits off from the army so we activate our speed slash stealth buff and mow it down with all of our melee infantry. By the time the enemy makes it to the center of our city they've already taken tons of casualties as they've been non-stop tanking towers and they just ran through four towers to get in here as well as they're about to run into these two. A lot of their units start routing and this G militia goes over to attack this barricade for seemingly no reason while just getting pounded by our archers.
Avengers. It starts running, Kong Rong starts running, and victory. We're not done, however, and we want a greater chance to capture Kong Rong. So we're going to make sure that we knock him out before the end of the battle, as we can't kill him because he does have resilience. Our general, combined with the help of some of our towers, is enough to take him out. And despite the AI predicting a decisive defeat, we are able to claim our heroic victory. At the start of turn 3, we head over to Taishan's trade port, and we can annex it for free as it belongs to the Yellow Turban Rebellion. The trade port's now ours, and it does give us some extra income. We then end turn, and at the start of turn 4, we walk over to the Livestock Farm's border, making sure that we do stop inside of our border so we can get another turn of replenishment. We then plop another general at Dong, which will help us with, oh, did I forget to mention? Liu Bei is marching over here with a full army. We then end turn, and at the start of turn 5, Liu Bei hits our ambush, heading for Dong. Fighting Liu Bei's army with our current army composition is super difficult. However, after a good hour of trial and error, I figure out a way to aggro their generals one by one. We start by aggroing the god of war, Guan Yu, and when he gets close, we use Disorient to root him in place for 10 seconds. He then loses sight of us as we enter the forest, and we wait till Disorientate comes back up. When it is up, we aggro him again and use the ability again to root him in place. At this point, he does decide to charge us, but we have Spearman and other generals waiting, and we end up debuffing him with Wisdom of the River, which reduces all of his armor and evasion, and after some time, we're able to take him out completely, which leads us to our next predicament, and Zhang Fi and Guan Yu were really good friends, so Zhang Fi does enrage for 100% more damage. He gets a bit too close to one of our generals and slaps him pretty hard for about one fourth of his HP. We kite him into our massive units, debuff him again with Wisdom of the River, and being that he is completely surrounded, we're able to take him out pretty quickly. After killing two of their generals, our main strategy is to keep our units clumped, as we do have a couple units giving us morale bonuses to nearby units. After losing two generals, the enemy's morale is pretty low, and a lot of their units start blinking, which leads to their eventual surrender, and Liu Bei never ended up joining the battle. This is unfortunate, as he does run before we can take him out. I believe we do end up getting extremely lucky lucky here however, as during the battle Guan Yu ends up dropping his weapon. I'm assuming that had something to do with us knocking him out, but to add a little cherry on top, we end up capturing Zhang Fi as well, who will not join us obviously because we are a yellow turban, but we are able to execute him and take his super good weapon, the Serpent Spear. We're not done yet however, and Liu Bei does retreat, but we're able to chase him down with our army. We now have the complete numbers advantage and we're able to surround Liu Bei and take him out. He does try to retreat, but I believe when you're trying to catch up to someone, you do have actually move quicker as we're able to easily chase him down with three of our generals. In Zhang Fi's place, Liu Bei added the legendary general Zaihu Yuan to his army, who we end up killing as well because he does have resilience, so we didn't actually kill him, we just end up knocking him out. This results in us being able to capture Liu Bei and execute him for his Shang Gu Jians, as well as being able to execute Zaihu Yuan for his refined family spear. I then add another general to Huang Shao's army, which in hindsight I should have added one more, as I was thinking since Kong Rong did recently take Beehive's livestock farm. Its garrison would not have healed up completely yet. It turns out its garrison was still pretty fat, and we were going into another battle where our advisors predict a decisive defeat. I gave Huang Xiao Liu Bei's weapon, so he's doing pretty good damage, on top of the fact that he has relatively decent armor and evasion. I forgot to give Chang Jun a decent weapon though, which would have made this a bit easier. I send both the generals in, and have Huang Xiao activate his speed and damage buff. We're able to do good damage to their commander, and she's almost ready to run before the battle even really starts. We back off and re-engage when our buffs back up and sure enough she comes out again and this time we're able to kill her. This makes Kong Rong extremely upset and he does enrage. Being that Kong Rong is a strategist though, he doesn't have much armor and we're able to kill him pretty quickly. As we try to bait the enemy general out, we're able to bait out two of the enemy melee units instead, which leads to us being able to shred them with the help of our archers and units. The enemy then full charges their units into ours, completely ignoring our generals for the most part allowing them to freely take out the enemy general. At this point our generals are extremely tired and they are moving very slowly, barely quick enough to outrun the enemy G militia. To give them some time to recoup, we kite our units away from their army, which leads to us being able to hide with our generals and eventually we're able to reset their fatigue levels.
Hong Rong is now completely wiped out and another faction gets wiped out which ends up being pretty beneficial for us. Our fellow Yellow Turban and Comrade in Arms Gong Du gets completely wiped out which I'm gonna go ahead and say was really lucky for us. A few turns later I'm contemplating who to put on the field when I see none other than the legendary Gong Du in the retinue deployment menu. I can barely believe it but sure enough he is in our candidates box and I immediately pick him up for 1k. Yuan Shao takes our farmland which I'm okay with as it's on the other side of the river so it's pretty hard for us to defend but then ends up sailing towards Dong and we're forced to pull back with our secondary army which did capture Dong's mine earlier in a delegated battle. We had to delegate it because we don't have fire arrows yet and the mine is a really hard layout to take out if you don't have fire arrows. We move our second army into Dong and put another one on the field giving it three generals and a few extra units. This one is lying in ambush but it can't actually help us when Yuan Shu is attacking. We can't make it through the city as it is currently being sieged so we are forced to just fight with our second army and Dong's garrison. But on this run our advisors do predict that we win a Pyrrhic victory which means it will be very close but since they do predict a victory we can just delegate it and we will win. This was all done on a practice run and the purpose was I was just kind of mapping out what would be a really cool start for Huang Shao. I'm going to be redoing this run in a live setting on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash the Rayman which if you're seeing this video right when it comes out my stream should be live fairly soon. I've had this idea in my head where I want to do daily streams and I'll just upload the highlights of that which will be a much more informal set of videos. A lot of you guys have been asking where's the continuation of my last series and the thing about the Junjiang run was that it's a very similar run to Ma Tang which I do plan on doing eventually and I just thought it would be too repetitive if I did two of basically the same runs. Also one issue is that WoW Ascension is launching on Friday so what I might do is just do daily streams starting today. I'll do one tomorrow as well but then starting Friday I'll probably just switch over to WoW Ascension for I don't know maybe a few days. I'm not really sure how long that's going to last but when I do get done with that then the daily streams will continue and yeah thank you all for watching. I'll hopefully see you on my Twitch channel or I'll see you in the next video. Peace.